Hello. Welcome to how to build a VPN server on PFSense. I use OpenVPN to create a VPN server. I also solved the problem of dynamic public app address by using dynamic domain name service. Let's get started. On a computer in the internal network I access PFSense. First you set the time zone to match where you live. Next you create a new certificate authority. It is responsible for authenticating the identity of the VPN server and authenticating the user's certificate. You add a description and common name to create a new certificate authority. Next you create a new certificate for the VPN server. You add a description and common name to create a new certificate for the server. This certificate is created for the server it is different from the certificate for the user. Next you create a VPN user and a user certificate. I create a new VPN user. I recommend you set a complex password, including letters uppercase, lowercase, numbers and special characters. In some cases the connection fails because of a simple password. While creating a new VPN user, you create a certificate for that user. You add a description and select a certificate authority. In this case I only create a single user, you can create more if you want. I have completed creating certificates for the server, user and user certificate. Next I install a new package. This package has the function of exporting the configuration file. The configuration file is used on the client. Each user has a separate configuration file. How to use it I will mention in the next steps. Next you set up the VPN for remote access. 
you select the certificate authority created in the previous step. You select the certificate for the server created in the previous step. You add a description for the tunnel. Next you set up the IP address for the tunnel. I set up a new subnet to allocate to the devices in the tunnel. Note that you use an unused subnet. I allow devices to access the local network remotely so I add a new route. Next I add rules on the firewall. Add a new rule to allow clients to connect to the server. The next rule allows packets to go through the tunnel. From the certificates I have completed the setup of the VPN server. The rules have been added to the firewall to allow clients to establish connections to the server. The client that wants to connect to the server needs a configuration file. So I export the configuration file. And here is the user configuration file created in the previous step. The content of the configuration file looks very complicated. But you only need to care about the public app address, because it is mentioned in the next steps. I go to the home page and download the client application. I download and install the application on my computer. After the installation is complete I import the configuration file I just got from the previous step. Let's set up the connection. You are asked to fill in the username and password password. VPN connection established successfully. To double check I connect to another wireless network. To make sure the two devices are not on the same local network.
Once again the connection is established successfully. I use the command window to test the connection between the devices. The computer is assigned an IP address from the tunnel subnet. Although the two devices are not on the same local network, this computer still connects successfully to the router. I will test if the client can connect to the devices on the local network. In this example I have a network storage server on the local network. I want to connect to it from a remote computer over the VPN. In this case the router is the VPN server, the remote computer is the client. The command window tells me that the remote computer successfully connected to the network storage server. I can access the network storage server management page. I would like to use the command window to test the connection again. On the computer I disconnect from the server and you will see it on the command window. The connection will be restored when I successfully establish a connection to the server. I am very excited to do this. There is another issue that needs to be solved, which is the dynamic public app address. The VPN connection will not be successfully established when the public IP address changes. I use a dynamic domain name service to update the IP address. In this case, I use DuckDNS. I use a Google account to create a free account. After completing the domain name creation, you go to the installation instructions on PFSense. On PFSense, you go to the Dynamic Domain Name Service Setup. You choose to set up manually. You just follow the instructions to complete the DocDNS setup on PFSense. The dynamic domain name service has been successfully set up. Next, you modify the configuration file. Instead of using the IP address, you use the domain name. This domain automatically updates the public IP address for you. Here is how set up OpenVPN server on PFSense and how to access remotely. Thanks for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe. Good luck.